land is your land. President Trump are clashing in Berkeley, California. This city. This land is my land. Okay, okay, okay. From California. This great state of California, one of the most progressive states in America, is on board the political revolution. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Well, good evening and welcome to Progressive California. I'm Laura Livengood, your host for this weekly show that explores and discusses the progressive races and issues and organizations and resources that we need to make a truly progressive California. Our topic tonight is Progressive Alliances with our guest, Lieutenant Governor Candidate Gail McLaughlin. But before I introduce her, I'd like to first thank you all for being here. We've got uh, Density and Oz. Hello, Oz. Jeffrey, Jay. Thanks, everybody, for being. Oh, and some new, some new names too. Everybody, welcome. Um, please like and share. We need your help. And because this is an engagement broadcast, we you have a, a unique opportunity to participate in the conversation tonight. So let me introduce co-host Joseph Cicada to explain Hello. the rules of engagement. Joseph. Okay, so I will be uh, playing the role of chat moderator during Laura's interview uh, with our guest today. And if you have any questions for our guest, uh, either put questions in front of it or tag me in at Joseph Sakata, and I will make sure to look at the questions and ask them during the Q&A session. Fabulous, thank you, Joseph. In the second half of the show, Joseph is going to be giving us an update on Municipal Internet in Pasadena and an exciting upcoming guest. He's gonna tell us about the the uh, Recall Rendon campaign and what's happening yes. with that. And also giving giving us a report on how counts of registered independents are stacking up in California. You might be surprised. Anyway, but let's, uh, let, let's talk about Gail. Um, Gail is, uh, as I mentioned, candidate for Lieutenant Governor of California. She is the former mayor of Richmond, California, and the first corporate free candidate ever elected to the Richmond City Council. She was elected mayor in 2006 and was reelected in 2010. And she credits the Richmond Progressive Alliance as being key to her electoral uh, success. And we actually have um, a short video. I want to say, hi, Gail. Welcome to the show. And hi, we Laura. And we will um, get you right after this video and uh, start talking about this. Okay, great. Corporate free campaigns are welcomed by voters as fresh air in a polluted environment. For 100 years, the Chevron Richmond refinery dominated our city government. The oil giant either financed or threatened city council candidates. Not anymore. Today, both the elected officials of the RPA and our grassroots organization go about the work of the people. We reduced crime with community policing and by providing opportunities for our youth. As a result, we reduced homicides 75% in eight years. We increased the minimum wage twice. We forced Chevron to pay $114 million in additional local taxes. We imposed pollution controls. We defended homeowners that were underwater in the mortgage fiasco. We defended immigration rights, and we raised almost any progressive issue you can think of. And as a result of all this, we significantly transformed our city of Richmond. In November 2016, when the entire country moved to the right, Richmond voters not only passed a rent control law, but elected two additional progressive candidates to the City Council. Now, five of seven members of the City Council are RPA members. After 15 years of organizing, we have achieved a corporate free progressive supermajority, and we continue the transformation of our city. I like that. I like that. Any progressive issue you can think of. Gail, <laughs> thank right. you so much for being on the show tonight. Um, Gail is going to tell us a little bit about, um, tell us a little bit more about how the Richmond Progressive Alliance started, and then you're going to tell us about some of the current um, organizations that are running on that model now. 
Right, right. Well, first of all, thank you, Laura, for having me on the show. It's exciting to be here. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so the Richmond Progressive Alliance, as the video um, mentioned, is uh, about 15 years old, and I was one of the co-founders uh, co of it, and as you mentioned, the first elected uh, corporate free candidate of the Richmond City Council uh, and a member of the RPA sitting on the council. And today we have that super majority. So it's really um, been quite a journey, uh, hard hard work, but we, we accomplished so much. Um, mm -hmm. The whole key to having these kind of um, changes in your city is to build an organization and run corporate free candidates for uh, elected office. And then of course, um, changing the composition of the council is just the first step. The ultimate goal is to change the quality of life for the residents. So we were able to uh, do many things like um, in, raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. We reduced crime as was mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, 75 percent and we got 114 million dollars in additional taxes from Chevron we limited their pollution and we mm -hmm. beat their millions on the electoral field three and a half millions they wow. spent to try and defeat me and two other progressives in 2014 mm -hmm. and of course passed the uh, rent control law and so many others defended our immigrants and defended our public school system so those are just some of the things we were part of a we became part of a community choice energy program so mm -hmm. not only did we push back at the big bad oil company but we lifted up renewables so you do the pushback and you do the lift up of the good thing so that's um what the progressive alliance um is all about in mm -hmm. richmond and um people were excited to hear about us especially after we got that super majority and they were um you know, wondering how, how did you do it in Richmond? So I started giving presentations and, and that led to my Lieutenant Governor campaign. And um, my campaign for Lieutenant Governor is all about encouraging and hopefully inspiring others to um, build progressive alliances. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've gotten about 10, 12 new progressive alliances over the last year mm -hmm. um, that are modeled after to one degree or another after the RPA, the Richmond Progressive right. Alliance. So um, yeah, I'd love to share some information with you about these wonderful new groups that um, have emerged. Well, great. Yeah, every time I talk to you, there's a new one <laughs> added to the list. So, um, right. well, let's you know, let's let's start at the top. We've we've got a, a nice list here. We were going to talking about the South Bay Progressive Alliance, San Diego, South Bay, LA, Pacifica, North Coast, the mm -hmm. Del Norte, Concord, San Francisco, mm -hmm. and Alameda. That is a wide swath of our state and quite a lot mm -hmm. of diverse areas. Why don't we? Um, Let's start at the top. Let's talk about the South Bay Progressive Alliance. Where are they okay. active and, and and what are they doing? Sure, yes. Uh, before I do that, I, I forgot to kind of give you a little bit, and this is just a one sentence uh, lead in because the other organizations have followed the RPA in this mm -hmm. regard. We, we made sure we were diverse and inclusive and year round because the idea of um, not only supporting corporate free candidates in an election year, but also um, in non-election years to keep the local movement and alliance going is really important. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, a short description of what the RPA is, and mm -hmm. it has been um, taken up by many other organizations, as mm -hmm. you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So the South Bay Progressive Alliance uh, was really one of the first um, new progressive alliances that occurred. Uh, they uh, they met with me early, I think, um, after the 2016 election, probably um, early in, in 2017. And uh, I gave them a little um, presentation and they just got to work right away. Mm -hmm. This past October, um, they had their official launch. I mean, all the time they were meeting and starting out with a small group, just as the RPA did, mm -hmm. and then expanding and um, they d I had the honor of speaking at their official launch in October um, of 2017. And then I had the honor of speaking again at one of their meetings just recently in January, mm -hmm. um, where they elected a new steering committee. The uh, Originally, uh, groups often have the founding members steer the organization, but as the, it grows, they immediately started, uh, you know, having an election. And 
So they now have an uh, elected steering committee and they have action teams, very similar to the RPA. We have action teams. So I know they have an election action team and a climate action mm -hmm. team. And um, they have, uh, I can't even recall what some of the, oh, an education action team. Um, so, and they're endorsing two city council candidates okay. who are running without any corporate money. One is Omar Vesk. Vasquez and one is Shay. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't recall her last name. S H A Y is her first name. Shay mm -hmm. Franco, I think, is is her name. And mm -hmm. she's. Um, they're both excellent candidates, really out there to change. San. They're running for San Jose City Council. So oh, the South Bay is, um, uh, you know, really on its way to doing great things. Well, great. I'll be watching. That's where I grew up. So ah, that's, wonderful. Uh, I'll, be, mm -hmm. I'll be pay attention to that that particular group. Now, the uh, next on our list is the San Diego Progressive Alliance. Tell us yes. how they came to be. The San Diego Progressive Alliance was another very early Progressive Alliance that got going. Again, they wanted to hear from Richmond what, you know, how we did what we did. So I gave a presentation and they got to work right away as well. And um, right now they're um, I believe they're supporting a candidate um, as well. I, um, I think her name is Monica Montgomery, and um, they are um, they're actually going to be doing a town hall meeting that I'll be participating in on Saturday, and uh, other uh, I think Monica Montgomery may be there as well. Mm -hmm. So they're really, really moving forward um, with the whole issue of. Um, local political power, they get it, you know, and that's what we want, you know, we want them. They also, um, many of these organizations followed the bylaws or at least took what they could from the bylaws of the Richmond Progressive Alliance. And yeah. so that's, we say, why reinvent the wheel? Exactly, I was just going to say that. <laughs> you know, everybody's got kind of their own flavor, though, of like they, they're talking yeah. a lot about developers down in San Diego. I know that's, that's, a, right. that's a huge issue for them. So Absolutely, yeah. So they've got, and they've got their, um, They've got their environmental issues as well in terms right. of uh, the uh, issues of nuclear plant, uh, right. nuclear waste and right. such. Uh, so I've been keying into that issue and supporting activists that are wanting the um, mm -hmm. nuclear waste moved away from the San Onofre right. um, you know, site. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see so many groups, um, you know, really take off. So. Right. Another group in Southern California that has taken off is the um, South Bay Los Angeles People's Alliance. Mm -hmm. And they're another group that are in um, very concerned about environmental issues. South Bay LA it has a lot of refineries mm -hmm. and they're fighting like Richmond did, you know, to limit the pollution and to get better safety. Um, but they also understand the issue of running local political candidates corporate free candidates. Mm -hmm. And what they did recently, which was very exciting, was hold a corporate free candidates forum that I had an opportunity to participate in, as did other candidates, local and statewide. All, you know, all of the candidates that were on, on the forum uh, had to be corporate free and take no corporate donation. So that was really exciting. So um, yeah, the People's Alliance, the San, uh, San South Bay LA People's Alliance is coming mm -hmm. along really well. They they meet regularly as well. I like um, their description where they say the sharing important political stories. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, that's a that's, that's a community that's that's a community feeling thing. I like that. That's right. You know, and one of the act key ast activists there said, um, you know, they they're kind of autonomous. Each activist or various clusters of activists in the alliance kind of have their own autonomous uh, kind of journey, I guess you would say. So they're trying to come together. And mm -hmm. I told them, as uh, we learned in the RPA, we don't have to, we have to agree on our values and on the big issues. Right. But, you know, conflict is good for an organization. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, it's good that you, you, you have those brainstorming sessions. And if there's conflict, you work it out, majority mm -hmm. rules. And that's, mm -hmm. that's how it's got to be. So, um, you know, the minority has the right to express their opinion. But 
anyway, they they're working it out, and I'm very proud that they're that they're doing so well. These are skills we have to have: being able to yes. figure stuff out and work with, <laughs> right. work with a team. What a concept! Exactly. So exactly. moving uh, up north to Pacifica, which is an area just south of San Francisco, they have the uh, Pacifica Pro Progressive Alliance. What's going on with them? Yeah, absolutely. So the Pacifica uh, Progressive Alliance is an organization that's kind of a compilation of different organizations, I think, um, to my understanding. They're just getting started on their endorsement process mm -hmm. for candidates. I myself uh, filled out their questionnaire about, you know, several weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and, um, you know, I'm, we'll, I'll hear from them, hopefully, with a positive in, uh, statement of endorsement. Um, and they, they've done things, uh, they're working on fair rent issues and environmental okay. issues, and of course, social justice. Uh, I believe, I, I know this, that early on, I think it may have been uh, about a year ago, they um, pushed to become a sanctuary city. Uh -huh. So that was, that was a big feat and, uh, you know, a big accomplishment. So mm -hmm. they're doing very well, and I look forward to continuing to work with them as well. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if Jilly Love is in the, oh, you are. The next, you'll like the next mm -hmm. one. The next one is the North Coast People's Alliance, which is up in the Humboldt yeah. area. Yes, the North Coast People's Alliance is doing extraordinarily well. They're another organization that got their bylaws, have their endorsement process all worked out, and they have action teams um, and um, have a steering committee. They, they, they're really well-structured. Um, I was up in Humboldt oh, it was a few months back and they had a, a wonderful gathering of folks filled, filled a, um, a community center. And uh, just last, just yesterday afternoon, um, I was able to uh, have a phone call into one of their meetings um, because they wanted to hear from me because they were going through their endorsement process oh, and wanted exactly. to hear from me. And I was able to share a few thoughts by uh, phone and afterward they let me know that they endorsed me so i'm very oh. grateful to their for to the north coast people's alliance for their endorsement and for their great work um they yeah. also are very concerned about environmental issues they're very big um on yes. um, medicare for all issues mm -hmm. as well because I mean, they have some nurses involved so single payer is a big issue for them and they're um you know they're they're very variety uh, a variety of activists mm -hmm. uh, and and local elected work is really key for them so right. i'm glad to hear that so right. they're doing good work they uh, they actually call out specifically too in their description how they really try to uh transcend partisan politics this is policy oh. over party and i like absolutely I like, I you know like that. that's that's one thing we stress. Um, that's how the RPA came together. We were mm -hmm. people from different parties, progressive Democrats, Greens, no party affiliation. We just came together with our values and set party aside. And we stress that when I talk to other uh, groups of activists who are considering an alliance mm -hmm. and they get it and they yeah. um, have uh, followed suit. And that's, yeah. that's really the way to go in this yeah. day and age. Yeah, I like that. Uh, moving into the more into the East Bay, we have the Panol Progressive Alliance, yeah. which is just yeah. doesn't even have a website yet. It's it's really brand right. new. Um, well, what's, actually, what's going on there? Yeah, so the Panol Progressive Alliance has been, you know, going on for a, a I'd say five or so months, five or six oh, okay. months. I just think they. Panola is a small, smaller community. Um, mm -hmm. I, we uh, it's close to Richmond, so mm -hmm. we've worked with a lot of the activists before. Right. Like I've worked with a lot of the adult school. Um, activists who wanted to make sure adult school got funded and it was getting cut by the school mm -hmm. district. So they're working on a lot of education issues, not only right. adult ed, but pushing back on the whole um, charter school movement, standing right. for our public school system. Um, they also, and so many of these groups have helped my campaign by signature gathering. Mm -hmm. So I'm very grateful for that. But they have met regularly in Pinot on a month-by-month uh, -month, uh, basis. They have, they're also issues interested in library issues. They started out meeting in people's homes, which we always advocate, you know, start with a small group. Now they're meeting in their library community rooms. So uh, the group begins to grow little by little and you find yourself needing a bigger space. And uh, that's, that's how a, an alliance grows. Okay, perfect. Well, moving all the way up to the tippy top corner of the state, the oh, new progressives nice. of Del Norte, they're way, they're right up at the Oregon right. border, right on the Pacific. Um, right. Tell us about them. So um, 
yes, the New Progressives of Del Norte. Now, a lot of these groups, I might also add, and in, in including this group, um, emerged from originally being Bernie Krat groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed and that so, when I was going through their right, website. Like, right. Okay, so <laughs> that's how the New Progressives of Del Norte got started. Mm -hmm. And um, I was I went up there um, a few months back, and wonderful group of activists who are very concerned. Again, I mean. Californians are concerned about the environment, and as we rightly should be, you know, we mm -hmm. have, um, you know, we have a beautiful environment, but we also have a lot of uh, oil refineries and mm -hmm. a lot of concerns. So they're concerned about, um, you know, slide-prone areas right. um, on um, Highway One that need to be, uh, you know, built in a way or addressed in a way that is safe for um, the community. And uh, of course, they're involved in um, issues of they're fighting back against Trump, and they've had some rallies to fight back against white supremacist groups, and uh, just a, a wonderful another. Uh, there are there's some artists in the community right. that are really lifting up the arts. So um, I and they've been also education is a big mm -hmm. issue for them, and they pushing back against the privatization of our public school system that we. We know the Trump administration with, um, you know, his uh, appointee are um, pushing for this whole voucher right. system. Right. So th they also, I was very pleased to go up there and mm -hmm. uh, have a chance to hear from all of them. So great. they're doing great. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, back to the East Bay, Concord. Yeah. That's another city near Richmond. Yeah. Um, and, and they seem to be uh, pretty concerned about income inequality and living uh, conditions. Tell us about uh, that. Yes, yeah. Now, Concord Communities Alliance is uh, very much uh, a new organization. So they're, you know, they're doing the same thing that, um, you know, we are encouraging all, um, organ all these organizations to do, social justice, environmental justice, economic justice. Um, they have some unique issues around district elections. Their city council is, uh, talking about uh, changing from at-large elections to district elections. So they're making sure that the underrepresented or the um, more um, low-income population, right. the lines are drawn so the low-income populations have a voice and mm -hmm. have a strong voice um, in the process of the democracy um, electoral system. So they're doing great work and I look forward to um, meeting with them. I haven't had a chance to go to their meetings um, so I, I look forward to have that, have that opportunity. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Well, th th this next one's exciting. This is the San Francisco Progressive Alliance, which had their mm -hmm. intro meeting today. Were you there? That's right. No, I was not able to go to that today, mm -hmm. but I did hear that they were having their public launch. Uh -huh. I, um, I know they have been meeting um, for a while now, for a few mm -hmm. months anyway, but it is fairly new. And I believe they're working right now on issues um, of um, the mayoral race because oh, the yes. um, That's yeah um, huge. right right That's exactly huge. it's a big issue so they're they're looking at that and and you know figuring out uh, where they want to stand on that so right. they're you know, San Francisco is a community that's working hard and they have lots of housing issues and all that. So right. um, I look forward to uh, what they're going to do. And I'm sure uh, with the great progressive um, activists that are included in that, great things will occur. Right. They seem to be really a group of uh, a truly an alliance because they mention in their uh, statement a, a, an alliance of independent progressive organizations and individuals. So it sounds like they yes. are really pulling together quite a few yes, diverse groups, which is exactly what we have to do. You know, we've got to, we have a lot. Of, the yeah. Progressive arena has a whole lot going on, and the more that we can coalesce around, you know, the you know, a strong group with a strong platform, the you know, the right. better. Right, absolutely. Yeah, Matt, we've done great. We've we've gotten <laughs> almost through. We got one almost more to go. Um, okay, another East Bay Alameda Justice Alliance. Tell us what's going yeah. on. Yeah, so the Alameda Justice Alliance is one of the organizations that is more of a compilation of organizations. Mm -hmm. um, they they may evolve into more of a, a group of uh, you know loose knit group of individuals and mm -hmm. eventually more structured. Um, but right now, I believe it's. They have a wonderful fair rent um, group working on rent control, very strong. Um, but they're also working with groups that are working on um, Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. um, and peace. So um, right now, I think there's four major groups that uh, are coming together 
to, and I was at their launch um, not that long ago in January, a wonderful, wonderful organization. Um, I had an opportunity to speak, but they also have their community leaders speak, which tell mm -hmm. the history of Alameda and wow. the struggles of, you know, of people of color. And mm -hmm. so it was very interesting. So I applaud oh, their work. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Well, that those are the major ones, but I think there was a few more that you wanted to give a shout yeah, out to. I just, yeah. Yes, thanks. There was a couple more I wanted to mention. One mm -hmm. is El Cerrito Progressives. Now, they're uh, slightly different in that they have chosen not to endorse or run candidates for local office. Um, you know, we're always pushing the corporate free candidates, so we encourage that. Maybe they'll do it in the future, but right now they're just working on issues, but doing good work. They, uh, El Cerrito became a sanctuary city, um, you know, in the past months because of their efforts. And they also um, are, um, they're, they have a scorecard for candidates. So they mm -hmm. kind of Put that out to their membership rather than okay. an, an endorsement and then there's also the um berkeley progressive alliance right. now uh they've been around for a few years and um they have um met with us in the richmond progressive alliance so you know we we've stayed in touch with them as well so okay. and there uh, for people who are just Good. Yeah, so to answer to answer Joseph's question, um, yes, it is. It can be overwhelming at first, but the the thing to remember is to get together with a, a small group. We started small in Richmond and uh, just meet frequently and regularly, and never turn back. That's the thing, you know, catastrophic free fall in this country. And we have to start, you know, doing something and, and not standing on the sidelines. So know that there's going to be hard work involved and sometimes some ups and downs. Um, sometimes you'll, uh, not everybody will go to every meeting, but keep those meetings going and don't get discouraged. Um, it'll, it'll grow because people, people will, will, uh, will understand that it's needed. Okay. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Bram, thank you for the super chat and dollars. It's very kind of you. Does uh, you, from the big banks that support fossil fuels and switch to public banking? Could you, I, you kind of broke up a little bit there. Let's try it again. Yeah. Do you have a plan to divest from the big banks that support fossil fuels and switch to public banking? So, oh, so you're saying, is there a plan or do yeah. I support a plan for that? Yeah, I have a plan. Do I have a plan? Yes. Well, first, <laughs> well, first of all, I definitely think that uh, cities should divest from the big banks. Um, you know, uh, there are people working on that, um, that are putting forward re resolutions that city council members are bringing to their cities and saying, um, you know, tell your city manager to look at what is going on with your investments in your city, take them away from, um, from the big banks, you know, put them in a community bank or, you know, or some social responsible investment. But if we have a public bank, a statewide public bank, we are going to be able to do so much. I mean, a public bank will allow us to prioritize affordable housing, to fund infrastructure, to um, give low interest loans to small businesses and worker co-ops um, because a public bank is um, built and run for the public good, whereas the big private banks are run for private gain. So um, we need to really have this. It, it, North Dakota for a hundred years has had a statewide public bank and they're doing really well. So we, we, uh, I'm, that's one of my platform items and LA is uh, working on its own citywide. They're considering doing a citywide public bank and even in the San Francisco Bay area, various cities are considering doing citywide or regional public banks as well. Well, perfect. I think you know Paul Stanton, Gail, and he's going to be coming on next month to talk about ah. uh, public banking on the show. So oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful, great. That's a really interesting topic. Thank <laughs> yeah. you so much. Um, okay, but so uh, we actually other... have another question oh, okay, uh, from great. Jeffrey. Will the progressive alliance? Well, I guess uh, will the progressive alliance or do the progressive alliances stay in contact with each other? 
Oh, now that you. that is a very good question because it, it kind of will segue into a little bit about my campaign. Mm -hmm. um, so my campaign for lieutenant governor is uh, has two wings. The first wing is to encourage these progressive alliances to build from the grassroots local political power. And uh, the second wing, of course, is to get elected because as lieutenant governor, I will network these progressive alliances together. Um, even now I'm talking about a lot of them to one another and, and to some extent they are in touch with one another, but when elected, I'll be able to um, really continue this networking. We could hold you know, con conferences and mm -hmm. forums and um, do you know, think tanks and progressive, progressive progressive work come together within the progressive issues that we all support. Mm -hmm. And then we could pressure the um, legislature and other state executives to do the, do the right thing because mm -hmm. one elected official can't do it, but as an organizer, cause you know, as uh, when I was mayor, I remained an organizer. And when I'm Lieutenant governor, I'll remain an organizer mm -hmm. and I will um, mobilize people or work with them. They'll be mobilizers themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's how we'll get single payer Medicare for all and free public college. The Lieutenant Governor sits on the um, UC Board of Regents and the California State University Board of Trustees. Mm -hmm. So meeting and mobilizing with students to get free public college, mm -hmm. um, use that seat that the Lieutenant Governor sits on to raise the profile of that issue. Um, you know, and. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor sits on the Economic Development Commission, raising the issue of the public bank through that seat. Right. So there's many, many ways that this organizing project, bringing together the progressive alliances and all the other great progressive groups um, can happen with somebody who's working side by side with them. Right. Okay, uh, one last question. Does Gail have plans on coming to Ventura County or, do, or does she already? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have been to Ventura County. Um, I visited the um, Ventura, um, our revolution group who endorsed me, I'm proud to say. And um, I was actually on a radio station out there, but I, you know, the campaign has about, well, until June, there's three, three, or, three or four months, February, mm -hmm. March, April, May, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Left. So I, I expect to be doing a lot of traveling and hopefully I'll get in the top two and then go till November, Yes, um, which will mean I'll keep traveling. So yes, I would love to come to uh, Ventura again. Perfect. So. Tell, us, um, tell us about your latest uh, endorsement. Yeah, so I'm very excited to announce that I have the endorsement of Bernie Sanders, our Revolution National Organization. So I, there's really uh, only five California candidates that the um, our Revolution National Organization has endorsed so um, mm -hmm. so far. So I'm proud to be one of them. Um, I also have the endorsement of 34 local California, our revolutions, and I expect more to come, as well as Democratic Socialists of America chapters and Green Party chapters um, and just many peace and justice groups. So, um, yeah, but I'm very this this getting this national organization, yeah. our revolution is is a big endorsement. That's and dumb. I'm very grateful for them to see that. Uh, what my campaign is doing and i credit my campaign team and you know all the supporters uh, that have gotten us this far oh fantastic so tell us how can people get involved in your campaign what do you need most and how can they find you well because we don't take corporate donations um we depend on individuals to uh to both fund the campaign with lots of small donations as Bernie did, but also to be out there, you know, spreading the word. So I would say mm -hmm. right now, one of the biggest things we're asking people to do is um, volunteer and they could go to galeforcalifornia.org backslash volunteer. Mm -hmm. And they could sign up for um, phone banking and um, text banking and canvassing. and. Um, not so much for asking for money, but for identifying uh, voters that will, you know, sharing the message of the campaign sure. and asking people to vote for me or to, you know, commit to voting for me. And then they spread the word from, from that point on. Mm -hmm. So we have some really strong strategies, a field campaign up and down the state. But mm -hmm. of course, people could also donate um, and mm -hmm. we really would appreciate that. Um, so they could go to 
um, you know, the, the website, gaelforcalifornia.org and donate. But mm -hmm. um, any volunteer work uh, would be greatly appreciated. It's exciting. You can get people together and have a pizza party while you're phone banking or right. texting. And, um, you know, just really, it's a great way to um, build, a, build a movement, really. Yeah. Well, you've been such an inspiration with all of these alliances that you are building, not just in your, your your home region, but all over the place. And that really is what a statewide role like this uh, can be. And we're excited having someone in lieutenant governor role who really will actually do all those things. Well, I just I do want to say that, you know, while I'm encouraging and hopefully the Richmond story is inspiring people that yes. when you fight, you can you do win. You know, when you fight, you win. But um, it's people are autonomously running their own uh, progressive alliances and, you know, doing their own work. And that's important, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I'm grateful mm -hmm. that that is indeed happening. Well, we were so grateful that you came on to help us uh, parse all this out. We hope that you mm -hmm. find time to come back again. Oh, I would love to, to Laura. You guys are doing, doing great work. So uh, keep it up on your end. <laughs> thank you. Before you go, Gail, I want to uh, tell this to you uh, online, uh, live, and with all the progressive organizations, if you guys drop by, that we could really help you organize if we got together and, and, and produced online forums with this technology. So I'd ah. love to be in touch with you and let's let's help amplify your voices. You know, you don't have mainstream media to work with, but you do have some independent media that is, is here. So I'd, I'd love to coordinate and help uh, help amplify your voice, uh, Gail, whatever you need. Well, yeah, it sounds like you're wanting the Progressive Alliance's key people to yeah. be in touch as well. Right. Yes. yes. I hope so. Yeah. Yes. So I, w I will definitely give you some of the key people and uh, you know, uh, we can carry this forum of Progressive California further. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Before we go into Joseph's segment, I want to do just a brief um, little pitch for Appeal Media, as uh, John just put in. We are seeking to help uh, um, progressives all up and down the state get their message out. Um, but I'd like to remind everyone that Apple Media is a volunteer run nonprofit that relies on viewer donations to keep the lights on, the internet going, and the shows in production. Uh, we currently do six weekly broadcasts, our progressive state shows for Oregon, Washington, and California, as well as two episodes of We the People and our Saturday wrap up show, Progressive Weekly Review. Uh, we are looking to reach the, the point where we're getting $500 a month in recurring donations. And I think we're still about a hundred dollars short. So if you can spare a few dollars a month for independent media, it would be much appreciated. Just go to donate.appealmedia.org. And after the show, when I remember to put all the links in the description, there is also a specific link that you can go to if you want to donate directly to this show, if you think it's extra special. So, and then the other thing we do is if you like a little swag along with your support, you can go, we've got a merch shop now, Progressive California. It just went up today. So we only have one design, but you can get it on just about anything you can imagine, including doggy bandanas, water bottles, <laughs> hoodies, and t-shirts. So uh, th there will be a link in the description. You can go there. Um, and you can shop and do, go to shop.uphillmedia.org for our regular logo swag, and you'll hear more about that. But that's another way that you can support us. Hey, Gail. I, thank you, Laura, for yeah. that talk. You, you can get out of here. You, you can go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all. Thank you all very much. I enjoyed okay. being on the show. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so now it's time for the news with Joseph Sakata. What's on your mind this week? Joseph. Okay. <laughs> so another week in news. Really. Uh, today I'll be talking. Well, today I'll be actually giving you an update that I forgot to give during the last show. I'll also be doing an update on recall Rendon. Yes. Did we? Very that was nice. That is how you say it. Yes. No. Talking about how registered independents are now outnumbering Republicans. I'm mm -hmm. surprised. <laughs> uh, Right, though, uh, John, is my audio doing okay now, or? Uh, I was just cut, doing some weird stuff. I don't know what was happening there. Um, I tell you what, just so that we don't have it happen in the middle, I'm uh, we're going to take a, yeah. another technical break. Um, it's just going to be 30 <laughs> seconds, everybody. Joe's going to log out, log back in, and then we're going to start a okay. second.
And here we go. You're... Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay, so uh, the update that I forgot to give you guys last week is an update to the municipal internet story uh, that I did last last week. Uh, it was a story about how Ron Placone, uh, who is the producer at the Dream Draw Show, the host of the Get Your News On With Ron show, was leading the fight to get municipal internet in Pasadena. And I am, pr- I am happy to say Ron Placone will actually be joining us on Progressive California on April 15th. Yay! Enough to say yes. I'm going to ask him if he was going to come on. Thank you, Ron, and we look forward to having you. And make sure to tune in on April and just generally make sure to tune in every week so you can be updated on this. Right. All right. <clears throat> so uh, moving on to Rendome. Another update to something that I haven't really covered before, but we'll get to it. So Recall Rendon, you might have heard about it. Uh, Anthony Rendon, who is currently the Assembly Speaker, is a bit of a dickhead, I would say, who is currently stopping California from getting single-payer health care because he is the man who killed SB 562. It passed the California Senate and it could have passed the California Assembly, but instead of bringing it up for a vote, what Anthony Rendon decided to do was he decided to shelf the bill saying that it was incomplete. And one of the reasons he used to say that it was incomplete was that there was no funding mechanism to the bill, despite the fact that the Nurses Association has come up with multiple different ways in which you can actually help fund single-payer health care, all of which will be a much more efficient and better system for the people of California. Now, uh, the Recall Rendon movement began, and once uh, Rendon said that he was going to shelf the bill, and it's been going on for a while, and people have been saying, hey, Rendon, release the bill. Release SB 562. Bring it up for a vote. Do your job. Actually add a funding mechanism to it if that's what you were so concerned about. And they've been threatening Rendon this entire time by threatening to kick him out. Now, <clears throat> that's been going on for a an year, and here's the update, which is from the LA Times, uh, and I shall read a little bit from the LA Times piece about how the campaign to recall as uh, Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon has fizzled. His effort to recall uh, over his decision last year to shelve a single payer healthcare measure has sputtered, according to organizers. The Recall Rendon campaign posted on Facebook that their attempt to recall Rendon, a Democrat from Paramount, will not move forward, explaining that collecting the required 23,000 signatures was too burdensome. The post put up Friday has since taken down. Stephen Elsey, an attorney working with the recall effort, said some involved with the campaign are now turning their attention to trying to oust Rendon in the fall. He is being challenged by Maria Estrada. Now, basically, this means that on one hand, the movement to uh, get rid of Rendon by recalling him is somewhat being put on hold. And they're actually putting their efforts into backing the progressive challenger who is going to be taking on Anthony Rendon come the 2018 elections, June 6th, June 6th, June 5th, is it? Uh, the day of the prime yeah. in California. Mm-hmm. Uh, her, uh, the prime progressive primary challenger, as I mentioned before, is Maria Estrada. She is a bit of a progressive activist. She's one of those people who has actually been fighting in the recall Rendon effort along with all the other uh, progressive activists. She's a no corporate cash candidate, meaning that She's not taking any corporate cash. It's a grassroots level campaign. She is for SB 562, which is a thousand times better than what Anthony Rendon is doing. She has been in wonderful Gail McLaughlin, who you just were heard heard talk. Uh, and she is <clears throat> a great fighter, honestly. You'll go to her website right now. She has a few of her issues up. She's still com- finishing her website, but one of her issues is the environment. She plans to take on uh, polluters who companies that are polluting right now. She plans to crack down on them. She's been fighting in this effort to get SB 562 this entire time. And right now she's fighting the California Democratic Party, which has actually, <clears throat> which Maria Estrada has actually been fighting to try to stop them from automatically endorsing Anthony Rendon. She actually got enough petitions, petition signatures to actually stop that endorsement from happening. But mysteriously, the California Democratic Party somehow seems to have leaked that list to Anthony Rendon and the Rendon team seems to have actually gone and pressured people who signed the petition and people who signed the petition began backing out. It's a very corrupt situation that's been going on and 
I bet she'll be giving us an update on it when she goes on We the People on March 26th. Yay! It's, it's, it's a really exciting experience. Uh, uh, exciting appearance. That'll be fun. Yeah. You guys should too. And if you guys want to find out more about Maria Estrada right now, you can actually go watch an interview that Ron Placone actually did with her on Wednesday. Uh, get uh, clips from the interview have been posted on his channel. Uh, now, going from a story about how the Democratic Party is disappointing to a story about how people are not registering to become Democrats. <laughs> uh, according to a new report, registered independents are now outnumbering Republicans in California. Now, this was a report that came out uh, in January, but the LA Times picked up on it this week. Uh, reading a little bit from the article here. As the June 5th primary election approaches, Democrats still dominate California's voting rolls and the percentage of independent voters continue to rise, according to new figures provided by the Secretary of State's office. Just shy of a quarter of the state's voters now forego any party label registering as no party preference. Funnily enough, that's actually the registration that Gail Mbappé had going on, a slight increase from last year. If the trend continues, as expected, California's pool of independent voters could soon, could soon surpass the number of Republicans in the state. Democrats account for 45% of California's registered voters, giving the party a 19 percentage point advantage over the GOP, the state registration figures show. The Democratic Party's slice of the electorate in non-presidential election cycles has remained relatively stagnant for two decades, while the, Dem while the Republican Party's is uh, registration slipped by 10 percentage points. The percentage of independents, meanwhile, has more than doubled since 1997. Now, is this surprising? Are we shocked by this? No, we've known for a while that the number of independents has been increasing over time. Uh, now, here's a bit more of a closer breakdown on the specific percentages uh, for the Californians who are registered to which party. Uh, people registered to the Democratic Party make up about 44.63%. Uh, the Republican Party makes up about 25. Uh, so does the independent, so does those who are. Uh, uh, registered as no party uh, preference, 25%, and the rest of the tiny percentages are for the other parties, including the American Independent Party, which is a really misleading name, uh, the Libertarian Party, the Green Party, uh, and the Peace Party <clears throat> as well. Now, uh, this is no surprise to all of us who have been paying attention to politics. We know that a lot of us feel that the Republic Republican Party is just plain awful, and that the Democratic Party is just not doing anything. And as I like to say, not really standing for anything. It's their new motto. We stand for nothing. Mm -hmm. So not surprising at all. And you might say that it's good that the Republicans are losing people who are registered to them because that means that there are less Republicans out there. But this isn't something that the Democratic Party should necessarily be happy about because like it said in the article, they aren't really gaining in numbers and they aren't really gaining in numbers with the people that they really should be getting support from. The millennials, the Asians, the minorities, they aren't as inclined as they once were. And who can blame them? I mean, look at what the Democratic Party is doing. Right now. Look at what I told you about what the California Democratic Party has done to Maria Estrada. Look, look at what they've done to Stephen Jaffe. Stephen Jaffe is going through something similar right now where the California Democratic Party is really going against him. Look at what's going on at the, at the national level. Look at what's going on in the DNC. Look at how Tom Perez ousted a bunch of progressives, a bunch of Bernie supporters, a bunch of Keith Ellison supporters. Look at what happened to them. That kind of bullshit is what's alienating people to the Democratic Party. And that's why stuff like this happens. That's why Like California, 25% are now saying that they are independent, and the Democratic Party registration is stagnant around 44%. This is not something that the Democratic Party should be proud of, and this should be a wake up call, but it isn't because they are asleep at the wheel and they don't actually care about what they are standing up for. Bill. They care about whether or not they stand up for their corporations and their big donors. And because a lot of my friends know that as well, by the way. Uh, I'm in that age demographic. I'm part of those people who should be joining the Democratic Party right now, who should be happily going around saying Trump is now in office. I am part of the resistance. I'm going to fight with the Democratic Party. I'm not saying that. I have friends who were who woke up 
politics. Thanks to Bernie Sanders for the Democratic Party right now going, what the fuck are you doing? I can't be a part of this party. I have plenty of friends who have told me, hey, I think I'm going to demexit. I think I'm going to go no party preference. I have friends who have gone and said, you know what? I've been staying as a Democrat this entire time because I wanted to vote for Bernie in case he ran in 2020. But you know what? I'm going to the Green Party. It's shit like this. It's shit like it's the shit that the Democratic Party has been pulling that's led to the situation, and they aren't learning. And this is a clear sign that they're in trouble. In a state like California, when Republicans are leaving their own party and becoming no party preference, and they're not getting a fucking increase because everyone knows that the Democratic Party. <laughs> now, uh, like as if uh, this was. And out the California Dem, Dem, uh, Dems are having their convention next weekend, and that's going to be an interesting sight because, as you know, a lot of those establishment Democrat types, the Anthony Rendons of Rendones of the world, the Nancy of the world, they are the people who go out there and speak at those conventions. And I'm sure that they're going to be progressives, progressives who are at the grassroots level who will be there, and I'm sure some stuff will go down. So we will keep you guys updated on that next week on the news. So that's it for today. <laughs> Thank you. And so, everyone, sorry so much. We know that Joseph's audio is, is cutting out. What was your okay. big, what was your, your, your big closing statement that you just said there? Because we couldn't hear what you said about the, about the, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not gonna try and make you remember that. Anyway, um, onward. So we made it, we made it through the whole show. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We'll figure out what the, what the audio is going on there. Um, uh, coming up on Progressive California in the next few weeks. Uh, next week, we have uh, uh, Rep. Ro Khanna from uh, California District 17, which is Silicon Valley, talking about revolutionary technology. Just, just God, slow down. Holy shit. Hang on. What? Sorry, Laura. You went all too fast. I just say slow down. <laughs> Sorry. I will slow down, yeah, slow Dave. Down. No. Uh, no, I want I, I just first, Joe was badass. You're right, everybody. And I know you say you got the gist. I don't know what's going on with that. It's, it's yeah, I don't know it. either. I'm we're gonna work yeah. on it, figure it out, but it, it's it's really difficult to isolate these problems. So yeah. I just want to apologize. Okay. Sorry, Lauren. Yeah. I didn't have time to get your card up. So now start with Rokan. Oh, okay. All right. On March 4th, we will have California and climate change with guest Jess Phoenix. Uh, on the 11th, we will be talking about public banking, power to the people. Our guest will be Paul Stanton, a activist in Southern California area and a friend of, of Gail's. And then on the 18th, um, Michael Bracamontes running for governor in California. will be talking about the housing crisis in California. He's a civil rights attorney, works a lot with people and tenancy issues. So we are looking forward to uh, revisiting uh, that particular theme. And uh, just say, so stay tuned. There's all kinds of impressive stuff going on. And we made it to the end. And I've chose my favorite Tom Waits song for our song to go out with tonight. And before you go, ooh, Tom Waits, just wait, because this is a really good one. I thought of it today and <laughs> it, uh, it just felt right. Um, it's not so bad. If you, if you guys know Tom Waits, this is one of the more palatable <laughs> tunes. It's a ballad. It's awesome. Um, the point being is that uh, things are not easy these days. Um, there is so much sadness, so much confusion, and the world in a lot of ways just doesn't feel right. And that can make, really isolate you and make you feel alone and helpless and frustrated. Um, I think the important thing to remember is that life still has its sweetness too. And sometimes when you least expect it. And if we're all to survive and grow and thrive, we need to help each other. So in the words of the song, we need to stand right here and take each other's hands and, and hold on. So until next week, hold on everybody. Tom Waits. Yeah, right. Good show, you guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. They hung a sign up in our town. If you live it up, you won't live it down. So she left Marty Rio's son. 
Just like a bullet leaves a gun With a charcoal eyes and Monroe hips She went and took that California trip Well the moon was gold and her hair like wind Said don't look back just come on Jim got to hold on, hold on, you got to hold on, take my hand, standing right here, you got to hold on, we gave a dime store watch, and a ring made from a spoon, everyone's looking for someone to blame. You share my bed, you share my name Well, go ahead and call the cops You don't meet nice girls in coffee shops She said, baby, I still love you Sometimes there's nothing left to do Got to hold on, hold on Baby, got to hold on And take my hand Standing right here, you got to hold on Well, God bless your crooked little heart St. Louis got the best of me I miss your broken china voice How I wish you were still here with me Oh, you build it up, you wreck it down Then you burn your mansion to the ground Oh, there's nothing left to keep you here But when you're falling behind and it's a big blue world Got to hold on, hold on Baby, gotta hold on Take my hand, standing right here Gotta hold on Down by the Riverside Motel It's in below and falling By a 99 cent store Closed her eyes and started swaying But it's so hard to dance that way When it's cold and there's no music Oh, your old hometown so far away But inside your head there's a record that's playing A song called We gotta hold on to take a mind Standing right there, gotta hold on You gotta hold on, hold on Baby, gotta hold on Take a mind Standing right there, gotta hold on You gotta hold on, hold on Baby, gotta hold on And take a mind Standing right here, you gotta hold on You gotta hold on, hold on Baby, gotta hold on and take a mind Standing right here, you gotta hold on 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 You gotta hold on. You gotta.